with a quick recap of the system we've been considering for the past few classes to the control. And I just want to quickly emphasize what we've been looking at and then you can see how that relates to the block diagram. There's some important points based on some questions that people have been asking me that I just want to make sure that we're all going to understand. So we call the system we think that recently we have been looking at it's a low mix tank and what the temperature in the system. I'll illustrate that over here. We've got this temperature sensor that we've been recording the temperature leaving the tank. And there's a flow of all water into the tank, but what we've been looking at is manipulating the flow of the hot water. So we call the heat as well. Send that signal out of the controller to the valve. Okay, so that controller tells the valve open 5% more or close 3%. It sends deviations to the valve, right? That's how we've understood what's going on in, in this system. Now there's a little bit of detail around this that I'm, I'm glossing over. There's a lot more complexity here. There's electrical signals, there's pneumatic signals. But for now, that's a good enough way to understand what's happening here. So when you look at this block diagram, we've been considering lines of lines. Here's my PI controller, the proportional and the integral part. All of this complexity over here, all of that is wrapped up inside this box here, that controller. So everything from taking the set point in and then taking the temperature and there's my temperature coming out of my process, that comes in, the set point comes in, all of this complexity to calculate the input to my process, the manipulated variable, is what's happening inside that box. Where does this box live? Where is it physically located in the process? In the room. Any other places it might be? Anyone seen a PI controller? Yeah. Anyone see a PID controller? You almost likely won't. It doesn't actually exist as a physical device. It exists as a piece of software somewhere in a larger computer system, for the most part. If they are units that you can purchase, PI 
PID controllers that will calculate those, of those algorithms for you and distribute pieces of electronic circuitry that you can purchase. But notice the fact that all of this is wrapped up on some computer software. So some computer software simply accepts this temperature coming in, the operator in the control room types in the set points, and then the software takes care of all of this calculation and sends it that signal. So you may not ever see one in practice your whole career. You may go, we've never seen a PID controller. It doesn't actually exist as something tangible. But what does exist for you as the engineer is your ability to set and tell that controller what KC and TI. Those are your two handles that you've learned to do so far that you can use to adjust what that controller does. And we've learned what KC does and we've learned what TI does. And in today's class, we're going to add a third one into the mix. TD, the derivative action. So this is where the PID controller algorithm comes from. There's the proportional, there's the integral, there's the derivative. Okay, we call them, you might hear them referred to as modes. The proportional mode, that's this part over here, where we take the error and we just multiply it by a constant. That's the proportional mode. The integral mode is that same error, multiplies by the case and divides by ti, but that's the integral mode. And we're going to add a third mode in parallel to that today, the derivative mode. Okay, so I just wanted to emphasize this to make sure that you understand that when you look at that diagram, recognize that all of this complexity over here is one block, a controller, and it's not something that you can go to and touch. It's not tangible. This process over here, this is physical. This is not a transfer function somewhere in a computer system. And we use the transfer function here in this class and to understand what's going on because that's our best approximation for the system. But in practice, this output from the controller gets sent to an actual valve on the process. That valve responds, opens and closes. It doesn't go through a transfer function. That valve actually changes a flow rate, or it changes some input to the process. And what we get on the other side is some measurement. We're simply using a transfer function to represent what the process would have done if we had one physically available to us. We don't have that. So this part is, is an abstract representation of the process. We measure our sensor signal over here, and we send that back to the process cycle repeats. Another piece of, of simplification I've done and we, we, we learn about this way is to assume that this happens on a continuous basis. Right? We assume that these signals get, get cycled around continuously. But in practice we actually have digital control systems. The digital control system doesn't sample here it samples maybe once per second, once every five seconds. Okay, so a digital controller will actually operate on a discrete cycle. And then it will measure the, the sensor value, wait a couple of seconds, measure a second time, wait a couple of seconds, measure again, and send that signal back. But that, that level of detail we'll get to maybe a little bit at the end of this course. But the, Behavior and response of this process is not going to be much different assuming it operates continuously versus operating what we call discreetly. So it's sort of, it's sort of sample measure. Okay, so let's get back to where we were then last time. We had this controller accepting the error, and we derived last time that that error is used to calculate the minimum related variable in the following way. We say take the error multiplied by Kc, and we call that our proportional mode. Then we have Kc divided by Ti, that's my integral mode, and that's calculated with the integral of the error signal. And then if we go to the last transform, that's the manipulated variable, it's Kc of s plus kc over ti and we said that that integral can be approximated as 1 over s times d of s. So that is our, our focus in Monday's class.
Now, let me just go back to that. Um, and I want to just point out something here that, that should be a little, a little bit of interest to you and understand why we look at the derivative mode. When we look at the derivative mode, we can see it as an anticipation of what's going to happen in the future. One way to, to look at that is, let me go back to this diagram that we considered in the original. So here in, on, the, on the projector, I have a simulation of a process, and the simulation here, in a way to focus just on this one, this simulation here considers just a first order process, and notice that, that time constant I've made it a little larger, you can see why now. And I'm just considering a proportional controller. And I'm making a second change. So let's take a look at that simulation. So we're going to simulate a first order process and under feedback control with only proportional. There's my output as I expect. I'm little modification I've made from last time is my step input is at time 10. I'm stepping at time 10, making a unit step, and I'm not reaching one. And we expect this. For a proportional only control, we won't get to one. But let's take a look at what's happening here to the, to the set point. So there's the set point. It's a step at time 10 from 0 to 1. And then let's take a look at the error signal. The error signal is doing the following. At time 10, we get a large error, and then it tapers off. And then finally, let's take a look at what's the input into the process. What we're asking that valve to do, that hot water valve, we're asking it to open suddenly at time 10, and then slowly close the valve again. Is this practical as an input? Okay. Now, it might be in some situations. Let's consider the case where 0 to 1 represents a 10% change in the valve's opening. Remember, these are deviation variables. So let's consider the case where the 0 to 1, that distance, is only a 10% opening in the valve. Is that re realistic, to ask your valve to do that? OK, so that is realistic. It's not realistic if zero was fully shut and one was fully open. It's unlikely that you're able to open a valve from a fully closed position to a fully open position in almost no time. But to ask it to open 10% that's maybe a half a turn on the valve, and that's, that's quite reasonable to be done in a very short period of time. Okay? But uh, I like the way you're thinking it. It's not always realistic to ask the valve to do this. So what we'll sometimes do is when we make a set point change like that, that's this very abrupt <coughs> in the process, we actually won't implement it like that. What we'll actually do is we'll make a more gentler change to the set point. So let's do that as follows. We'll take a continuous block and simply take a first order transfer function in there. Okay. And what we'll ask our set point to do is to gradually implement that set point. So let's put a little bit of dynamics in there. And now if I run that simulation, what I'm asking my set point to do is get to 1. At the time 10, start to make the set point change, but make it over a period of, say, 20 seconds. Don't suddenly open, send the signal in to the system to ask it to go to set point right away. So gradually ramp the system up in that way. So that's, that's more realistic and what's often done. Okay, so we'll, we'll call that sort of like a gentle, a gentle set point. Now, let's take a look what's happened to the error signal this time. Okay. So now my error signal is not this sudden spike up. Now my error signal is more of a gradual climb. Now take a look at, let me, now you, you know the future, right? But let me go back and let's say, well, what if we were sitting on the process at time 11? So time 10 is when we ask for the set point change to happen. Let's take a look at what's happened after time 11. So you're sitting over there at time 11. Time 10, that set point change comes. You're starting to see this error climb. What is your best guess of what's going to happen in the future?
that error is going to continue to fly. Right? In your best guess, if you were if you were the controller, in other words, I'm taking this box away and I'm replacing this with you as a person, you as a person measuring that temperature, <coughs> what does a positive error mean? First it is, let's get that out of the way. This error is increasing. What does a positive error mean? What's happened to the temperature? It's dropped, right? So a positive error means your temperature is lower than set. So if you were the controller, you start to see error climb, you recognize the temperature is dropping, what might you do? If your goal is to get that error down to zero. Add hot. Add hot water. Okay. So you're going to open that valve. Open that valve. Now let's take a look at what the PI control algorithm is doing. Here's P and I. PI by itself, what has PI done? Well, here it's saying KC times the error. Now the error is pretty small. Okay? The error hasn't got to a large value yet. It's only 0.2. So this term is small. So it's not going to add a lot of heat. You're not going to change your manipulated variable by very much at time 11 because of this. What is this next term going to do? this digital controller with your brain, like you, we do a pretty good job as control systems if we were to replace control systems, you know that you want to take an action. What is it about this curve that's telling you to take a larger action? There's a slope, okay? There's an upward trend there, and what we can say is let's take an action proportional to the slope. So if that error is climbing, if it's climbing really steeply, we need to be taking more action. If that error is not climbing steeply, we don't need to take more action. Right? So we add an additional term onto this called the derivative term from the PIP control. So what we do is we say add a term accounting for the slope. So again, KC appears here. If we add a term TB proportional to DE by DT. And this is going to be large in this particular situation that I've got up on the projector. Right now at time 11, that slope is pretty steep, so it's going to take anticipatory action to try and get that error down. Okay, so this is like if you were to replace the controller with yourself, you're opening that valve to let more hot water in really quickly so that this error doesn't persist for a long time. Okay. Now we can take the Laplace transform of that and we augment this equation then with Kc times Td. And the Laplace transform of a derivative we've seen several times before is just times E of S. Okay, so we've simply updated our controller algorithm and added the derivative, the derivative of KC times T D times S, the lowercase s times the error. So we'll sometimes see the control algorithm simplified a little bit by taking out the common KC and say 1 plus 1 over TI plus TD times S 
and we put e to the s at the end. We remove the integral control now because uh, the derivative control is doing the job of the integral control. So what's your question? What if we remove the integral control now because the derivative control is doing the job of the integral control? Okay, interesting question. What if you remove the integral parts and only keep P and D? Okay, there's a problem with that. It's a it's a good idea. Let's let's investigate that here through the simulation. So. There's my proportional controller. I'm going to add a derivative part to it. And I've done that a little bit down here for you already. And what I'm doing here, let's just take a look at this so that we're all on the same page. I've essentially taken, here's my proportional controller. I copied and pasted that model down here. What I've gone and added is I've gone and added the derivative part. So there's my error signal coming in. I'm going to use a value of 2 for T. There's a derivative block that you can drag into the simulation, and then we're going to add that back. So this is no different to before. I'm taking my proportional controller, and I'm just adding a new mode to it, the derivative, with that error signal being split, sending it to the derivative block, taking the summation, and sending that into the process. This is this is all in, um, this is not in uh, the class. This, these are. Uh, these are in the plus point. Okay, this block, all this block does is it takes the derivative of that signal using a difference and then sends it out as the output. Okay, so this is all in the plus domain. Now, one thing that's helpful when you put two systems side by side in MATLAB is that you can now actually compare the signals. And the way you can do that is by adding in this block here. So what I'm going to do is I'd like to plot the signal side by side. So let's put that scope over there. And then there's a block over here. Some more routing. So under the signal routing section, there's a block called MUX. It's a little bit of an electrical engineering term, but what it does is it takes signals and combines them up together. So what that does is now we can take the output from the second block down here, the second function that I'm simulating, and just send it to a signal scope so that I can plot the two signals side by side. So that's allowing me to compare what happens if I've got a proportional controller versus what happens down here where I've got a proportional and a derivative controller. So you don't have to remember and simulate two simulations side by side and remember what the plots look like. You can just simply combine the two plots and show them in one go. Okay, so let's take a look at what that's doing. Let's give this uh, an input here. We're going to take that same set point change and send it to the second control system. We're simulating these two processes. Notice they've got the same transfer functions side by side. So let's take a look at what the derivative mode is doing for us. If I simulate that, Take a look at the scope there. We're simulating till time 11. So yellow is what the first simulation is doing. That's with just proportional only. The purple line is proportional plus derivative. Is it doing what we expect it to do? Explain to the person next to you why it's doing what we expect it to do.
Okay, you have, to, you have to be able to explain your thinking to others, right? Or admit that you don't understand and ask what the person around you who is understanding, how they're interpreting it. So the purple signal, remember, comes from the second transfer function, uh, sorry, from the second system below. That's with derivative plus proportional. The first, the yellow system, comes from proportional only. What we see is the purple signal rise more rapidly because that second system has this additional term here to add additional input to the process proportional to the slope of the error. So error is changing. Let's take a look at that error. What is it unit? Is that temperature? Yeah. So this error signal is got a really steep slope. So what is happening, this valve here on the second process is going to open more to anticipate that error. Let's go for a little bit longer. We'll go for, say, 50 minutes. Let's simulate that now. What we see then is this. The derivative mode gets you steeper initially. It's rising up faster. But then, actually, you end up at the same point around about the same time. So derivative mode buys you a little bit more. Gets you there a little faster. And we can actually make the derivative mode greater by increasing T. So let's take a look at what happens if we increase T. We can now go to a steeper, or we're emphasizing that slope a little bit more. And I'm going to use some five over here. So now when we're using a larger TD value, notice that that purple slope climbs a, a little bit more faster than the yellow slope. So it's getting us upwards faster. If I go up a little bit more still, I can go now 5, let's try 15, for example. Run that simulation. We can start to see it take an even greater effect. So the, more, the greater the derivative action, so increase this TD term, the more I emphasize TD, the, the greater my anticipated reaction that I'm taking. Okay. So let's just make uh, some, some notes there on that. TD has units of time as well. So just two important modes here regarding TD for yourself. When we set them in the future, TD has units of time, and secondly, TD is a positive number. Okay, there's a good point here when dE by dt is zero, which is a steady state, your error starts to get flattened out, then you get no more error anymore, and then basically the derivative mode switches off. Okay, so that's not, that's not a problem, in fact that's the expected effect of the derivative mode, you don't take anticipate a reaction if you've got a flat line because there's nothing to anticipate. Okay? Another way that you can understand derivative mode is the following. You're riding your bike along a flat piece of ground and your aim is to ride at constant speed. So that's your goal, is your set point is to be at constant speed. You see a hill coming up in front of you. So a steep slope. What do you do? You 
pedal harder. You're putting more manipulated variable because you're anticipating dE by dt to have a positive value. You head downhill, you don't put any more manipulated action in, right? If you could pedal backwards to slow yourself down, you would. That's where the analogy breaks down. But you, or you start to break, okay? If your aim is to keep constant speed. So dE by dt can be a positive values and it can be negative values. <laughs> so if it's a negative value, it will actually close the valve a little bit more in anticipation. Because it says that you're already coming close to your target. Okay. So dE by dt does exactly what it's supposed to do. dE by dt fails though in one or two particular cases. <coughs> the one case where it fails is, what if your error is like this. So this is error, there's time, and there's error. What is dE by dt? Infinity. Okay? So in other words, if you make a step change into your process, if you make a step change into your process, dE by dt is infinity. So now you know why I did this. Let's take that away for a minute and see what happens. So take that away, put a regular set point in, that's my process. Simulate that. dE by dt, so there's my error. Look what's happened to the y-axis. You can't practically work with it. And simulate, you notice here, stuck at 20%. It can't simulate past that step point. Okay, it's actually got stuck. The e by dt and infinite slope cannot be calculated. So real control systems have ways built in to avoid this uh, problem. But that's one thing from a theoretical perspective that we struggle with. There's another issue that's important that comes up with derivative mode. And that is, if this signal coming in over here, this measurement from your process is noisy, there's a lot of fluctuation in it. So you can get very high errors, then low errors, then high errors. And you're going to send your manipulated variable open, shut, open, shut, open, shut, because the error of dE by dt is changing so rapidly with the noisy signal. Okay? So real control systems here again will put in some smoother to smooth out that noise so that you send a relatively clean signal over here to the controller to avoid it being but we'll get to those complexities at a later time. I just wanted to have them in the back of your mind. Okay. Any questions on this? Derivative mode, proportional mode, integral mode. Okay. We've covered the, probably the most important controller that's used in 95% of the processes in the world. We'll use the PID controller. Cruise control in a car. Anyone who's driven a cruise control car? Yeah. Next time, put your cruise control on, see what happens, and listen to the sound of the car as you're going up a hill. That guy will kick in. The derivative mode kicks in because it sees that your error is growing larger. It revs the engine. Okay? That's cruise control, PID, standard PID control. So let me pause at this point. Uh, the midterms are on their way. The TA is bringing them. 